a simple principle, principle found in mechanics of materials called bending stress. Um, bending stress, which is also known as displacement stress, uh, basically this is a behavior of a, of a slender material, uh, basically a beam, which is subjected to external loads. So basically now when using this theory, firstly we assume that the material is homogeneous, number two it's isotropic, number three the young modulus of the material is the same throughout. I'm just going to give you an example of an everyday life situation of bending stress. For example in your closet, um, the rod. You see that after some time the rod will be a bit bent. This is because of the weight of the cloth. What causes this is this principle that you're talking about, bending stress. So I'm just going to put this bar here, right? And then I just want you to focus at this black line here. You can see that at first this black line is quite straight. It's not bent. This is because there is no moment acting on this beam. And then now we take an external load. Um, we put the external load on top of this thing. You can see that after we apply the external load, the black line is now bent. There's a deflection of the black line. This deflection, this is because there is a reaction force there and a reaction force there. These reaction forces are causing moments towards the center of this beam. Now I want you, I want you to take a closer look at these two latitudinal lines. Cool. You see at first that these lines are straight. They are parallel to each other. But now we're just going to put an external load as well on top of this beam. When we put a load now, you can see that this longitudinal line is now bent. And look at the longitudinal lines now. They are bent now. They are no longer parallel to each other. This is being caused by the moments which are at the reaction force. Now this principle of bending stress, basically a material, a bar, can be imagined as made up of layers, quite a number of layers. Now, if you look at these layers now, after we apply an external load, these layers are seen to slide over each other. Now, I just want the camera to come at this side, to come at the back here, to look at the line here, right here, this corner here, right. You can see that there are layers here that I've used to make this beam now. You can see that now these layers are sliding on top of each other. This is because there's a couple there, in the couple there, a couple being caused by these reaction forces. Now this couple is causing the top part of this beam to be in compression and, to and the bottom part now is now in tension. That's why the layers are sliding over each other. And then at the middle part now, there is now I'm just going to take another beam, a second beam. Now basically this beam is the same as the first one beam, as the first beam, but the layers that we talked about previously are glued to each other now. This gluing to each other now causes the layers to be in contact with each other. So now when there's an external load applied, when there's an external moment applied, this causes the layers now not to slide over each other. So we're just going to test that principle. Um, this material you can rather call it um, reinforced. This beam is rather reinforced by the glue. Then we're just going to take our external load there, put it on top. Right. Firstly, before I put this load on top, I just want you to look at this line. You can see that this line initially is straight. Now we put this load on top. Nothing happened. Basically, there, is, there might be some little deflection, but we can't see the deflection. This is because this material is rigid. So this shows that the bending, this deflection, this deflection curve is also dependent on the rigidity of the material. This material is more rigid than the first one. Therefore, the deflection is very rigid. Now I'm going to show you that the bending stress is also dependent on the moment of inertia. I've said earlier on that the formula of bending stress is called the psi is called my over i. i is the moment of inertia. Now, as we all know, this is um, look. If you look at this, at this, at this cross-sectional area, you can see that this is basically a rectangle, and um, the i for a rectangle is found from one over twelve b h to the power three, which means that as the h goes bigger. That means that I also goes big as well. Now we're just going to put this beam like this. When you put it like this now, you can clearly see that the I, the edge of the side of the cross-sectional area is, is small. So if you put this load now on top of this thing, on top of the beam, you can see that there is deflection, which means that bending stress is present because the edge is quite small in this case. Now I'm just going to turn around this beam, right? If I turn it now, you can see that if I turn it, the cross-sectional area, the edge now, we no longer take the edge at this side. This is now the best. The edge is this side. The edge is now quite larger now. When the edge is now quite larger, I'm just going to look at what happens at the deflection part. Right, I'm just going to put a load on top. There it is. 
no deflection. You can clearly see that there is no deflection. So as I increases, the bending stress reduces since psi is equal to my over i. Right. So lastly, guys, I'm just going to show you that bending stress is also dependent on the length of the material. Just going to use the same beam that we used earlier on, the basic beam, the flexible beam that we used earlier on. I'm just going to put this thing on top at first, and then I'm just going to provide a support reaction there. Right. If you look close there, this thing, oh, let me just change this thing because that side is no line. If you look at this thing now, you can see that clearly that black line that we talked about earlier on is bent. This structure is bent. Now, you can see, look at this length, it's a bit longer. Now, I'm just going to reduce this length to see what happens when you reduce this length. Just going to support there again. Right, you can clearly see that nothing happens in this case. This line remains a straight line. This thing does not bend. If it does bend, there is a little deflection. This means that as the length increases, so does the bending stress increases. As the length reduces, so does the bending stress as well. The bending stress reduces. Um, this can be shown that you know that our moment, moment is found from force times distance. Force times the perpendicular distance. That's the formula for moment. So this makes sense. Since bending stress is called MC over Y, bending stress is directly proportional to the moment as well. So as the length goes bigger, the moment does goes bigger as well. So does the bending stress. So if you reduce, let me just give you an example, an everyday example of a fishing rod. You can see that a fishing rod is quite long. You can see that now when you throw the fishing rod into the water, there will be a curve there. There will be a deflection curve. The fishing rod. Now imagine if you reduce the length of the fishing rod. If you cut the length of the fishing rod, there will be no deflection because the length is quite small. Presented to you has shown that bending stress is dependent on three things. One is dependent on the length of the beam. Number two is dependent on the moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area of the beam. Number three is dependent on the rigidity of the material. So hope you've enjoyed the lecture and hope from now onwards bending stress will be quite easy for you. And um, good luck with the calculation.